As we've been telling you, a record number of Republican women are on their way to Capitol Hill and making history in the process. A couple of days ago, I spoke with Congresswoman-elect Young Kim, one of the first ever Korean-American women to get elected to the House. Then there's Florida Congresswoman-elect Kat Kamek. She's the youngest ever Republican woman elected to Congress, and she joins me now. Kat and I had a chance to talk in the commercial break. We share uh, some Colorado roots and cattle ranching. And one of the things I love about your story is that you say and you recognize that only in America could this have happened. Tell us a little bit about how you're feeling today. Well, it's incredible and, and the most humbling experience uh, of my life, certainly. But Truly, only in America can a person go from homeless to the House of Representatives in less than 10 years. And it's because we have a free constitutional republic. And I'm just so honored to join the most dynamic, inclusive class, uh, freshman class of powerhouse women, minorities, incredible patriots. And I, I'm so excited to, to join this class and, and the United States House of Representatives. And it truly is. I mean, only in America mm -hmm. could something like this be possible. If you fast forward um, maybe 12 months from now, if you were to come back in a year, like what's something that you would really like to accomplish? You know, you guys were talking about it a little bit earlier. You know, uh, we've got school closures coming in New York. And in my district, rural broadband is a huge issue. In 2020, it, it's unconscionable that whether it be commerce, health care, or education, if you don't have access to high-speed, reliable internet, you're at a disadvantage. So I'm going to be focusing uh, very intensely on rural broadband and that critical infrastructure. We put a man on the moon in the 60s. We should be able to hook up every American in 2020. So I know that you've been there for a couple of days. There's freshman orientation. Um, what's it like meeting people from the other side of the aisle? Like, do you think there's a possibility that maybe some of these younger members can get together and, and work work well together? Absolutely. You know, I, I'm coming in as the youngest Republican woman in Washington, both in the Senate and the House. And I had the opportunity to meet the youngest woman Democrat uh, the other day in our bipartisan orientation, Sarah Jacobs out of California. And she's got a couple of key issues that she wants to work on. And I think as millennials, we look at things a little bit differently. We want to understand each other's reasons as to why we want to do these things. And when we pull out the, the personalities and the politics, it really comes down to the policy and the issue. And if we focus on these single issue items rather than these big comprehensive bills, we're going to be able to actually make progress and do the things that the American people sent us here to do get things done. So I'm excited about that. I think there will be an opportunity for us to work bipartisanly for sure to deliver for our constituents. And I just wonder if any of those members might ask you, like, could you help them with their phone? I mean, there's a lot of technology that you know <laughs> that they might not know. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I've been chronicling this behind the scenes mm -hmm. of freshman orientation, and some of some of my older colleagues have asked me, you know, what are you doing? How do you do uh, that? Are you, are you on? <laughs> I love yeah, it. yeah. So it's well, been fun helping them. Congratulations! I loved working on Capitol Hill. Of course, I wasn't a member of Congress. I hope that you enjoy your time, and we look forward to getting to know you here on the Daily Briefing. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kat. Take care.